Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Nathan Cobb, and I'd like to introduce Credit Safe webinars to those of you that are new with us and those of you that have been here. Uh, welcome back. Um, have a great webinar going on today, a great panel of experts, uh, just like we always try and bring to you. But before we get in and start talking to them, what I would like to do is just give you an idea of kind of what how this works and what we're going to do. So first and foremost, I do need to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, you should have gotten a, a kind of a notification from Zoom about that, but in case you missed that, uh, we are recording this, and if that's not allowed by privacy laws for where you're at or your company or what have you, please go right ahead and um, exit at this point. And the other thing with that is because it is being recorded, uh, you will have a chance to get a follow-up email from us um, that just basically gives you a link to this recording. So if you don't want to take notes or if you're driving or something like that, no big deal, you'll be able to do that. And it will also give you links to talk to um, any of our panelists via LinkedIn. So we will link all of their LinkedIn stuff right there. Uh, the other thing I want to let you know is this is a discussion. This is not a presentation. We are not here to talk at you. We are here to talk with you. So to facilitate that, the question and answer setup will be open at all times. So if you have any questions at any point, you go right ahead, drop a comment, a, co a question, a conundrum, a concern, whatever you want to say in there, and I will be monitoring it at all times. Um, so from then on, we'll, from now on, I will be checking that out. I will be seeing anything you write, and I will feed those questions right into our experts to be able to answer all of your burning questions. So uh, today, I am very excited to be talking about uh, this topic, which is the past, present, and future of credit management. Uh, so last week, we talked about the credit industry as a whole, and now we're talking about really the job, the role of credit management. Um, and how has that changed? What is happening? Obviously, 2020 has changed uh, things for in every industry and in every facet of life. And uh, we're talking specifically credit management, how, how things are looking, and then what do we see looking at the future? To help me with this, uh, I am ecstatic to have Lena Chindamo with me. Uh, she's going to be my co-host today. Uh, normally, I do these alone, but I'm excited to have somebody help me here. Um, you guys sh should be as well. And uh, Lena is the uh, she's one of our she is the director head of enterprise accounts, our our, our guru of all things credit and and enterprise. Um, and we love having her here at Credit Safe. And rather than butcher any more of her bio, I am going to hand it over to her. She can tell you a little bit more about herself and then introduce our panelists. So Lena, thank you so much for joining me again. Thank you so much, Nathan, for having us. I'm very excited to be here today and to have this discussion uh, with uh, the panelists. Uh, for a little bit of background on myself, um, been in credit management for over 20 years. I am a certified credit professional here in Canada. I uh, spent uh, some time in industry in different roles. I also am a national director for the Ontario region uh, for the Credit Institute of Canada. I have a uh, fellow uh, board member here on the, uh, on the panel as well. Uh, I also um, am part of the National Credit and Financial Executive Forum, uh, also an organization uh, uh, that really um, helps uh, you know, credit professionals with networking and, uh, and education. So um, you know, after spending so many years in credit management, I did decide uh, to uh, venture off to the other side, uh, working in, on a sales team. Um, and really helping uh, our customers and our prospects in a more consultative type role uh, so that I can share best practices and my knowledge and experience in the industry uh, to help them um, you know, find uh, solutions to, to maybe some of their problems. Um, so that's enough about me. <laughs> I'd like to introduce uh, our panelists. Um, I have uh, Ada uh, de Michelle uh, on the call today. She is a director of credit uh, with Ingram Micro. I also have Nishad uh, Kamaru on the call today. He is the general manager of the Credit Institute of Canada and Sangeeta Singh, a director of credit with uh, Kanaka Manolta. So, uh, so we've got some many, many years of knowledge and experience uh, on the panel today, but I'm going to introduce um, or maybe uh, give them each an opportunity to tell you a little bit about themselves. Uh, so I'll start with um, Sangeeta, if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself, please, for everyone uh, to know a little bit more about you. For sure. 
Thank you, Lena, and thank you, Nathan, for giving us an opportunity to share some of our expertise and knowledge. You know, I hope you've chosen the right ones. Uh, for people who don't know me, my name is Sangeeta Singh. I am a designated as credit professional, a CCP, and I have worked in senior credit and finance positions for almost 20 years. I have been a volunteer on the Credit Institute of Canada, as well as the National Credit and Financial Executive Forum in the past. I have worked in many different industries, some of which are food, pharma, consumer packaging, and now distribution. As Lena mentioned, I currently work as the Director of Credit and Leasing Administration in Konica Minota, and I have been there for almost four years. I am uh, one of the few who loves what I do, and I'm passionate about making a difference in an organization. So thank you again for having me here. So I'm hoping that I'm able to make a difference today. Awesome. Thank you. Ada, do you want to give us uh, your intro, please? Hi, thanks, Lena and Nathan, for having me. Um, very excited to be here. Ada DeMichelle, Director of Credit and Financial Solutions for Ingram Micro Canada. I've uh, got about over 20, I'm going to cap it at 20 years plus of experience in the credit space, worked for a number of different industries and different companies. Um, and one of the more interesting things that um, I love about what I do as well is that every company and every industry is very different and, uh, you know, presents itself with a unique challenge, even though we're in the credit space, um, how we go about doing our business, although some of the basic elements are the same, uh, dependent on the industry, it, you know, poses the, those different challenges and, uh, you know, excited to hear from, you know, the different participants on questions on, you know, how we are moving in, you know, different areas from a credit perspective, the past, present and the future. So thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Ada. Nishad, it's all yours. Sure, and, and uh, as well, I'd like to thank Nathan, uh, Lena, and Credit Safe for having me. And, and what a pleasure, I should say, to be in the company of three other uh, alumni from the Credit Institute of Canada. I'm a, as well a CCP. I've been working as a general manager for the Credit Institute uh, for the last 18 years. Prior to that, I was in the credit industry as a credit manager. When I left, I had about 10 years of experience under my belt. Now I've transitioned into more of uh, helping others, helping credit professionals achieving their, their potential through continuing professional development. And, and I take great pleasure and, and, and pride in, in, in doing that with the help uh, of the, the board of directors, the direction that I get. So um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's an industry that I enjoy very much working in. And uh, I am very glad to be part of this panel, although not at the same level as the, my fellow panelists. Uh, and I'm here to share what I can and also to take in what others have to share. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Nishad. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, folks, we have an amazing panel here. Uh, we always try to bring you the best experts we can find, uh, depending on what topic we have, it changes. But uh, we always try and get the greatest uh, people that we can on here. And I think we've definitely done it today. So I want to jump right in. And uh, Sangeeta, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with you for this question and, and feel free anyone to answer, but I'm just going to start and to kind of pose it to you, Sangeeta. If, you know, this year has been crazy. Uh, 2020, I, I don't think anybody, would, even the craziest fiction writers weren't writing this year. And we look at it and, and really the question I, I want to start with is what's been the major challenges this year for credit management as opposed to other years? We know it's an aberration of a year, but what have those major challenges been? Well, I mean, I don't need to say this, but we all know that we are in the midst of a huge global pandemic, right? So we all know that, and I'm, we are all experiencing it firsthand. The business and the overall economy are being hugely impacted. There's many business shutdowns that are being mandated by both the provincial as well as the federal government this has had a huge impact on our customers ability to pay as well as future sales as for our new and existing customers. If it were not for the support and the aid of the government programs in place, some of the businesses would probably not survive this pandemic. So we are extremely grateful to our government for providing these supports. But even with these programs for some businesses, 
it may only be slowing down their eventual decline and their failure to survive. So we all know that there has been significant increase in the number of closures, bankruptcies, receiverships, shutdowns, as well as skips. I've seen a lot more skips than I have seen in my previous years. So this is definitely uh, putting an additional strain on us credit professionals, credit managers, as well as the overall business. I almost feel like it's a double whammy where the organization is experiencing reduced sales, as well as we are experiencing increased bad debt. So in addition, what I have seen is there's complexities related to the global pandemic. When people don't have jobs, there's increased fraud, there's increased compliance risk. So as credit professionals, you know, it is our responsibility to have increased vigilance. You know, we need to really protect the business risk. So which has definitely led us to implement additional tightening of credit policies as well as controls in place, revisit them. I mean, we all know that managing the staff remotely was definitely a challenge initially, but I'm sure with, you know, with the technology and whatever we have in place, we've all done a good, good job at it. At least Konica was well prepared and we did a really good job with managing staff as well as the working from home. Analyzing risk, another thing that has really taken uh, you know, a toll or has become really difficult during this time. The information that we get right now might be outdated by the time we receive it. You know, by the time we get the information, the customer might have already skipped or closed or, you know, so definitely noticing a more emphasis on the conditions um, out of the four C's of the credits. We feel that that has definitely been on the limelight or the highlight. Collections, you know, for, I mean, credit professionals are equally responsible for collections. Collections have been hugely impacted. Mm -hmm. Our customers have been asking us for assistance with their debt. Some of them are asking for forgiveness. Some of them are asking for extended payment terms. You know, we want to support our customers short term as much as we can. However, if it does continue long term, it will definitely have an effect on our organization's liquidity as well as their ability to manage their own obligations. So it's a really a fine balancing act. We're trying to support our customers, but we are also trying to, you know, look at our organization and what it needs. And on a positive note, I do have one positive that has come out really of it. Positive. <laughs> it's the image and the reputation of the credit uh, management. It has definitely undergone a change. Many of you have probably, like Ada, I can talk about Ada and Lena, we have probably experienced firsthand credit being regarded as an inhibitor of sales in the past, right? However, credit management today is becoming an integral strategic part of the organization's decision making. So we were labeled as a no department, but we really are an organization's integral department now. Absolutely. Those are great points, Sangeeta, and you, know, you raised quite a few of them. I think I've lost track of all of them. Um, but a few things that stand out for me is um, our organizational uh, changes and perhaps even the appetite of, uh, you know, what the organization wants to take upon as far as risk, uh, process changes, right? So maybe how we did something yesterday or, or pre-COVID uh, is, is going to be different and you know, how we're doing that today and, and what that process flow looks like and if I think of things like uh, even just uh, payments like I've spoken to customers where you know uh, everyone is working from home but yet someone needs to get into the office to pick up those checks uh, those physical checks and get them to the bank so um, you know we've had to uh, make some adjustments there in, in processes for sure um, you mentioned stimulus absolutely like you know government is, is providing funding and yet some of those businesses are still um, you know on the verge of bankruptcy or decline um, but what's really important is the analytics piece that you mentioned and I think it's important to to be able to monitor those accounts and, and really understand what those changes are so the need for data and monitoring uh, has really been highlighted here and so I'm glad that you touched upon that as well um, I didn't hear anything about um, 
uh, insurance, for example. Like I know maybe there's, there's, there's we, we didn't really talk about that on the last call either, but you know, a lot of businesses will uh, insure, you know, instead of self-insuring, they're, you know, using uh, insurance companies uh, to help them uh, with, uh, you know, kind of what they're up against. Um, and I've heard, you know, many tell me that uh, insurance is being, cover is being pulled. So that brings us back to maybe uh, the analytics and how we're gathering information and how much information we can gather because the reality is even looking at financials, um, if we were to pull financials, we're not going to, it's not going to reflect um, this pandemic or this state that we're in. So how do we analyze this information uh, the way we used to, to say, yes, this company is going to survive. So, you know, maybe now we're looking more at business plans and, and better communication with our customers. So um, you raised some really great points. Um, I don't know if anybody else has anything else to add uh, when it comes to uh, the challenges that are being faced. And Lena, to add to what Sangeeta and yourself have said, you know, when we first went home and had to pivot, um, we needed to pivot very quickly. And I think that's been the whole story of, of 2020. And the fact that, you know, a lot of us, um, along with, you know, our co colleagues and coworkers have to have been resilient throughout the year. And I, I find that there's been a rhythm of instability. There's been waves where, you know, at the beginning of my, of my, in March and March and April might have been more doom and gloom. Oh my gosh, what's the general economic condition? What is the uncertainty with the economy? How is the shutdown going to impact our customers and their customers? And how is our AR going to look like? Um, and then, you know, things started to open back up and you've seen, you know, at, at the beginning of March, April, a lot of economists were talking about a U-shaped type of recovery, whereas now we're looking at something very different and more of a local type of recovery in different industries, depending on that industry, you know, it's more of a K type of recovery um, or, you um, doom and gloom for some industries. We, we've seen the restaurant business being decimated uh, with all of the different shutdowns. That has a ripple effect. So I think, you know, overall, the, the fact that we had to pivot, be resilient, and the different rhythm of instability has caused us to really it, to take a deeper look into, you know, a lot of things that Sangeeta said, you know, the, the fraud, um, the different processes, uh, skip payments, having all that and look at it from a, you know, holistic point of view when you're making that credit assessment is much more important. And I think that it has definitely elevated the status of the credit professional, N not as, you know, uh, someone that says no, but somebody that really works with a business and is a, you know, a trusted financial advisor. Absolutely. And I feel like it's it's constant change, right? It's like you have to ad adapt. And as, um, you know, as new uh, stimulus packages come out or as we move uh, into different stages of the pandemic, it feels like we're always uh, changing and adjusting. Do you feel that way? I agree on that. We've had to make a lot of different assumptions about the recovery. Um, you know, some managers were dealing with customer shutdowns and impending doom with their customers, um, while other, uh, other managers in different industries, for example, the technology industry, we've seen huge volume increases, you know, and our staff is, you know, uh, being inundated with increase requests and you know the need to get more credit because we need to supply you know certain customers with extent extension of credit because they're buying more laptops to support their customers because they need to work from home um, or any of the other uh, products that you know in our industry that, that we sell so I, I think that it's it's different in depending on the industry. So really, if you look at it from uh, an industry perspective, that rhythm definitely is has changed at the beginning of March mm -hmm. and now in November, December. And we've yeah. had to make all of these assumptions. Is this, is this company going to be around mm -hmm. post-COVID? Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Great point, okay. Thank okay. you. Yep. Michelle, go ahead. But yes, uh, yeah. No, no, I, uh, while I don't have firsthand experience uh, dealing with credit customers, what I do have is the, you know, the, the observations I've made from the conversations that I have with my members at the Institute here. A number of them are having, you know, uh, Ada made a very good point about the resilience of the credit community. Credit managers is a, is a group, a collective group that are very res resilient. Uh, they are adapting the, to, to the new ways of doing business, of managing uh, their portfolio. And, uh, and this continues. What, what has surprised me the most uh, uh, to date is the, uh, the increase in interest in getting more education. And, and that's where I can and add some value to this discussion is because we've seen an increase of, of credit professionals coming to us, registering into our program to further their education. You know, if, if it's a junior person who is not sure how to deal with the situation and, and, and in, you know, honestly, no one knows how to deal with this is the first uh, <laughs> that we're dealing with. It's not like the subprime mortgage crisis that we had back in 2008, 2009. And there are certain things that we're not going to be able to do, but it's, it's our resilience and our adaptability that, that, that is enabling us to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, great points. Yeah. Um, so we, had a, we have an audience question that I'd like to, to bring up here. Um, and it was asked, which C of credit do you think has been the most important during this time? So um, Sangeeta, since I, I started with you on this question, I'll throw that to you and then um, anybody can answer that. And, and we've got some others that are coming in. So folks, you can just keep sending your questions and we'll keep this discussion going. Um, thank you, Nathan. Um, so all the four C's of credit are obviously very important, but the one that plays a huge role at this time is the conditions. You know, you definitely need to look at the past. You need to look at the present but you also need to look at the conditions right now, what they are. If the customer was good in the past, considering these conditions, are they going to actually survive? So, you know, as Ada mentioned this, we need to make some assumptions, you know, we need to work with our customers, but with a definite focus on that. I am one of those who have added my own two C's to that. It's like communication and collaboration. You know, that's very important during this time. And I know it's very difficult because customers are not accessible. You know, they're not in the offices. You have to be creative. You have to get your sales staff involved more so now than before and try and reach out to your customers. So to answer your question in a nutshell, for me, it's conditions, communication, collaboration. I so you're, you're going to take one of the four and then add two of your own. Yes, so. I love that. That's perfect, Sangeeta. So Nishak, you should make note of that and add that to the I was going to say, did, did uh, we yeah. just change the, the whole process yeah. right here? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> We've definitely added two very important uh, uh, C's of, of credit and, you know, you hit it right in the nose. Uh, communications, I think right now is, is super key. Like you really have to be able to communicate with your customer, understand their challenges, understand what they're going through. You know, how can we help? I find that the credit professional is, has to be more accommodating now and really understand that business plan going forward. It's not so much uh, that past information, but, you know, we've had that experience. Experience is great, but but how do we move forward? How do we help our customers move forward? So uh, communication and collaboration are great points, Sangeet. I love it. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree. You know, um, in the past, uh, um, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, but a character played very big, important uh, aspect of that. But you know, the willingness to pay has been overshadowed by the conditions, right? <laughs> and the, the level of honesty of some individuals is there, but unfortunately, because of the conditions, because of the shutdowns, they can't operate. And it's, you know, not necessarily the big box, um, you know, retail outlets, it's, it's your neighborhood uh, local business that um, has been impacted and that has a ripple effect, right? So 100% agree from a conditions perspective with Sangita and uh, I would 100%, 150% agree on the collaboration and communication, you know. And, and I um, think, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
No, no, Nathan, I think the, the person who asked this question stole it from our handbook here at the Institute in our course. There's one, <laughs> uh, one question specifically on this, and the answer is capacity from, from our perspective, but, but I absolutely agree. It depends on the, uh, what's happening in the marketplace, right? Uh, and uh, the capacity for us is, you know, if you are able to pay, then there's a way we can, we can uh, work with you especially in, in under, uh, the current uh, conditions, market conditions. Sure. Uh, you know, you can always work with your current customers to, to pay you. If it's not now, if it's not all of it right away, you know, we can work with you. Uh, so, uh, yes, I, I, I think that, that question came from, from a course of ours. Straight well, there, well, you know, it's a, we can't get a better shout out for you there. So I guess you got, <laughs> you're owing somebody a check, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but Nishad, I want to I want to come back to you because we've got a a few questions coming in right now um, that are specific to the credit managers themselves, not just credit management, but the actual people doing the jobs. And how have you seen, you know, with the folks that are coming to you for education or the folks that you're interacting with or whatever, how have you seen credit managers been able to deal with all these challenges? I and mean, we're talking about them, but uh, you know that resilience really starts with a person. And how how have credit managers been able to deal with these challenges? Well, yeah, so, you know, no doubt that what's happening has created a lot of disruptions and major disruptions, things that we could not have imagined, you know, back in March of this year. So, again, I will go back to the, the res resiliency and adaptability. That's what I've seen uh, from these credit managers. A lot of them of our members, you know, I've been in the credit industry for a number of years, 30, 35 years and uh, they've seen a few ups and downs in the, in, the, in the economy and they know that, you know, staying focused uh, and that's how you can come out on the other side uh, successful, mm -hmm. right? So this is, this is what I've, I, I'm seeing. And, and, and a lot of these credit managers with experience are guiding like, you know, Ada, Sangeeta, they, they are guiding these uh, newer and younger generation of credit professionals you know, we, we, you know we, we've seen quite a bit uh, during our uh, careers uh, to be able to guide these people. And then I've seen that a lot of these, uh, um, you know, more experienced credit managers helping others uh, in the credit industry. That's, that's uh, one thing that I can mm -hmm. say for sure. Yeah. Nishad, you mentioned earlier that you're seeing a lot more um, uh, either members or uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, new to the credit profession, you know, coming to the Credit Institute for, uh, for maybe for some more education or some more learnings. Can you speak to us a little bit more about that? Yes, so the base, you know, the, the, uh, the programs that we offer at the Institute are tailored specifically to the credit industry. So, uh, a lot of the newcomers uh, in, into the, uh, these professions, you know, as, as, and I'm sure every one of you knows this, we don't choose credit as a profession, we fall into it, right, uh, by accident. But then, then once they discover, they can receive that guidance and, and, and what we see that they really enjoy the, the analytical part of it, the human touch side of it, Right, the collaboration that uh, really the credit manager is 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 sort of a of a you know is he's on the confines of sales, marketing, and credit. So he has uh, various hats to wear to facilitate sales, mm -hmm. but not at the expense of uh, uh, you know uh, of of uh, what would I say of of of, of, of uh, losing money. Uh, for the business, right? So, uh, their 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 primary role is to protect and grow the the assets of the of the business, and and that's where I've seen this this eagerness to learn more about how to do this, and and that's why we're seeing more of these people, these individuals, enrolling in our programs at the institute. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and, I, and I've heard that, you know, in speaking to some customers that uh, they are spending more time uh, with their teams and educating them and making sure that they have seasoned professionals and, and uh, you know, individuals that, um, you know, can do some of the analysis and ask some of the right questions and, you know, communicate and collaborate with their customers so that, you um, you know, they're in a better position to manage risk uh, or, you know, or any uncertainties as they may arise. So uh, those are great points, Michelle. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. 
And we're getting a, a questions coming in. So I want to make sure we get to, to the audience questions uh, specifically. And Ada, I'm going to come to you with this one, uh, just because you're the one on the screen that I'm seeing. And um, it's probably unfair because the asker of this question, I will call out by name and Mike Farrell is, is doing that. And he was on the webinar last week in your position. So he, this might be turnabout as fair play type thing right now. I'm not sure. Uh, But, and, and, and Mike, you had your chance to talk credit insurance last time. So, you know, I, I know you want to help us, but you know, we appreciate (laughs) that. Um, But Mike asks uh, as senior credit professionals, how would you recommend other credit managers approach the C-suite um, to push for change during these difficult times? Like what, what should they be focusing on when they're presenting against us? How should they be bringing this to this to the C-suite? What should they be doing? I think the level of influence that they have within their organization, they really need to focus on the fact that um, from, from a finance and business perspective, what can they do to add you know, that extra level of value uh, during this time to to really showcase their ability to, you know, either mitigate risk or uh, improve working capital. So those are the two very standard things. But not only that is what influence can they have on the sales organization to help secure you know, additional business from a strategic perspective, right? Is there something that they can do from a credit? Because at the end of the day, credit is an enablement to sales. Mm -hmm. We see it in our personal lives. We get that credit card, we spend money. I know I do. (laughs) (laughs) And it's it's absolutely no different um, from our, our, on our customer's side, right? Right. You know, our customers need that credit for their working capital so that they can expand their business. So when you look at the data, and and this is one of the, the, you know, primary things that I was going to talk about is that technology is now seen as the primary business tool in all aspects of an operation, whether it's sales, whether it's credit, finance, marketing, HR, anything, any department in a company, it's all data driven. If you're able to mine that data and able to really articulate to the C-suite, what can you do with this, you know, segmented customer base? How can you offer interesting credit programs to them so that you can go and get more sales? Mm -hmm. That that makes you invaluable. So- I, I hope I've answered that question. Well, I'm not sure if yeah. I got whether, it entirely right. <laughs> whether you did or you didn't, the checks in the mail, Ada. Yeah. I mean, we couldn't we couldn't ask for a better a better call out for the stuff that Credit Safe does and what you just did. So yeah. hey, we could finish the webinar. We're good to go. Yeah. Uh, they're so funny, Nathan. <laughs> um, so Ada, that's a great point. You know, uh, really uh, um, uh, letting the, the C-suite know that the credit professional is a strategic thinker. They could really help strategize and you know improve process. That at the end of the day is uh, you know we're looking for the, at the best interest of the organization at really increasing sales and managing risk, and that's all it comes down to because that's what credit managers do. Their number one priority is to help grow the business uh, and and manage and monitor uh, the risk. So back to your points about technology, uh, automation absolutely is key. And there's lots of different uh, platforms out there that really help, um, you know, the credit area, whether that be, you know, monitoring, whether it be an API and direct uh, feeds into their CRM so that they have real time data and that they're able to make quick decisions and, um, you know, have that information readily available. So, you know, selling those those key points to the C-suite or, you know, the CFO um, specifically or um, is, is really important is, is helping them understand what that level of information and automation can do for the generation of uh, sales and monitoring of the risk to really protect that bottom line. Absolutely. And Sangeeta, I'm going to come to you with this next question. Uh, they're asking what additional training uh, have you provided, if any, to your staff? So one thing we did is we uh, looked at our credit and collection process from start to finish. 
So we documented, uh, looking at uh, the pandemic and the situation change, uh, we documented the flow of the collections, what we want them to do. We provided them with an escalation protocol. Okay, if it is a this situation, you need to do that. If it's this, if you see this in a situation, it means this is what is upcoming. This is a high risk situation. So we created a flow chart for them and we presented it to the team once, twice, three times to make sure they understand. So we are really able to capture those closures and you know, anticipated bankruptcies fairly quickly because the team is really proactive. Um, the other thing we did was we partnered with our third party collections agency Mm -hmm. And uh, about the credit training, because our credit analyst, you know, was using some older mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was able to highlight for the credit analyst saying, okay, you know what, you can reach out to me, you need to look here, you need to look here. It was a reinforcement of a training plus as well as something a little bit. So the third thing I would say is in terms of training is one we really focus on in our teams is customer service. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, customer service is more important these days than it was in the past, because I feel like if you want to retain the business, you want your customers to be happy, to pay you, you know, once they get that uh, subsidy from the government, you know, they want to feel like who they want to send that money to or who they want to share with, they're going to remember who is the nice one with you, who has worked with you, who has collaborated with you. So we have done many of the customer service trainings with our team as well. And if there is any negative feedback, we reach out to our customers for feedback. And if there's any ne negative or constructive feedback for our customers, we actually incorporate that into a training session and a feedback session for our team. So we learn from, we make those mistakes into opportunities for learning. So that's the three things that we are focused on in terms of training. Absolutely. And Nathan, if I may add to this, Absolutely. you know, uh, the, the personal touch cannot we can't overemphasize that. That will mm. always be needed. Uh, but uh, touching on what uh, Ada said about leveraging technology, uh, mm. this is where I think there is huge potential for the credit professional to elevate themselves to the uh, C-suite. You know, leveraging, knowing how to use the technology, especially in a digital age where data is, uh, is, is abundant, Use that data, analyze that data, add value, identify who you can sell more to, and then go to the suite and present that case. And I think also credit professionals are can champion that cause within their organization, where you say you sh we need to adopt technology, we need to explore the uh, you know what technology can do for us, and so, and and this is not to shoot themselves in the foot, but to free up their time so that they can do other uh, tasks that are more productive. You know you know, getting rid of the manual, the repetitive task that you have to do. And we all know that takes a lot of time in, in, a, in our days of work, right? So sure. I think uh, there's a lot of potential for credit managers to, to elevate themselves to these issues. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like, um, and, and you know, change is inevitable, right? We, and I think uh, what I've seen is that credit managers definitely are resilient and they're adapting and they're changing and accepting and they're modifying um, um, so they're, you know, they're revisiting their credit policies, they're revisiting their process, they realize that what they did in the past is not working. And if automation and technology can help them improve and move forward, they're, they're much more open and willing uh, to make those changes uh, for the future. Yeah. So I'm going to keep moving here because we're, we're, we're still get, got questions here that are coming in. We want to get uh, answers to everybody. So the next question is, have you added any COVID related questions to your credit application forms or communication plans with your new and existing clients? Um, and then how reliant have you been with your sales team helping you in gathering that type of intelligence or information? So anybody, anybody want to jump on that one? So I can take that one if that's okay. Um, sure. Hanika Minolta's business is a lot of um, leasing driven. Mm -hmm. So initially when COVID stuck, we all know when there were government mandated shutdowns, you know, a lot of customers had to shut down their operations and they couldn't even, fun uh, the devices or the equipment was not functioning. So they were stuck with, you know, four year, five year leases. 
Mm -hmm. um, so we have to definitely be proactive because Konica Minolta does have a reputation out there with our customer base. So we, we were proactive. We had meetings with our leasing partners. We did communication out with our customers internally as well as externally, what we need to do to support our customers during this pandemic. We developed a, a certain um, set of questions that we need uh, in partnership with the leasing companies to see what do we need from customers because we're gonna support them through the deferral process during this pandemic. So we needed some basic answers. They were first wave and the second wave of deferrals. Have we made any changes to the credit application? Not yet, because we are assuming this is a short-term situation. So we don't want to incorporate that as a permanent change in the credit uh, application. But yes, we have uh, designed certain specific set of questions related to pandemic, which we are working with our customers on. Hope that helps answer. And, and I think if I may add, Nathan, you know, the approach when it comes to a COVID related risk, uh, credit managers uh, can borrow from what the insurance co uh, companies, the business insurance companies are doing out there. They will ask you before they renew your, your business insurance, do you have a plan uh, for the, uh, the pandemic in place? What mm -hmm. happens if tomorrow there's an infection, you have 300 uh, employees and infection on your plant and you have to shut down your, your business? What happens? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, credit managers can glean a lot of, uh, of insights, get a lot of insights by asking these questions and, and plan accordingly. Yeah. yeah, and if I can add to that, you know, the importance of communication has become apparent throughout this uh, pandemic. And I think that, you know, one of the, the first things that we've done is get on the phones with our customers and, you know, get to know them a little bit more. And to Nishad's point, you know, ask them those really, you know, sometimes difficult questions. What is their plan? What is, you know, what do they have in place in the absence of that? Well, what would they do if something were to happen, right? Um, when we were looking at our uh, business continuity plan at the beginning of the year, you know, we said, okay, yeah, you know, generally companies look at the BCPs and, yeah, something happens, okay, there's a fire, you know, we'll get back up and running. Who knew that we would be eight months, nine months into this, right? Mm -hmm. I thought I'd be home for two weeks and back in the office and life is good again. We're eight, nine months into this and who knows when, when the end is here. So I think that what we've all had to pivot and asking and going deeper into these questions I think is important as well. Contingency planning, I love that. Like I, I recall I mean, years ago when uh, when I was in the electronics industry and there was a tsunami in uh, Japan and right. uh, you know, that had uh, impacts on the business. And, and um, you know, back then working from home was, it was a different mindset. You know, we, we, we were, we didn't really let employees work from home and, and then COVID happened and everyone has to work from home and everyone needs a laptop and everyone needs, you know, something to be able to function function and, uh, and make the business go on. But we did learn that we could do that. You know, we did have some hiccups along the way, but we were able to adapt and, and move forward and, and get things running. But, um, you know, contingency planning, I think there's a lot more people thinking about that today. And, and how do we keep uh, the ball rolling, uh, even in the credit department when uh, these uncertainties uh, happen? Yeah, and I, I think with what we've seen, definitely, and, and I'll, I'll give a shout out, another shameless shout out for, for Credit Safe, but we've, you know, we've seen a lot of folks that are, are they don't want to change the process, like um, somebody said, I can't remember who, but somebody was saying, you know, we don't want to change the process permanently. You know, if the customer was already doing poorly, or if the business was already doing poorly, and the markers were there, this is not going to help them. If they were doing well, even if they are in a high risk area where it's a problematic industry, they still have a much better chance of coming out on the other side of this. Um, and you have to pair those things, what's going on with, with COVID and what's going on with just their normal business processes and, and the things that are going on it, it, that you would have looked at no matter what, um, and being able to put those together and then say, okay, now we can make a really informed decision based on what's going on right now. And knowing that that might change in 10 days. That may adjust in, in, in another, you know, 
two weeks or whatever. Um, like Ada was saying, you know, you thought you'd be home for two weeks. And then I, I don't agree with the life would be good to go back to the office thing because uh, as a remote worker for the last uh, seven years, I, I love this idea of remote work, but you know, it, I, I get what you're saying there is like, we would just get back to business as normal and, and we're not there at, at this point and it's, and it's not going to be so um, great stuff there I, I, folks. Yeah. I think that we also, I need to challenge the fact that, you know, I, I've been surprised with some businesses that were struggling heading into this, but COVID has benefited them mm -hmm. in a very positive, profitable way. So that's been a surprise to me, which is mm -hmm. a great aha moment. And then you, you also need to think about, you know, there's a lot of retailers that um, likely filed earlier than they would have uh, to take advantage of getting out of certain leases or, you know, different non-financial reasons. Um, mm -hmm. So that was another big surprise from, from what I've seen uh, during this pandemic. So there's been different, like I said, different rhythms of instability and surprises. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And Ada, I want to come back to you with a, a with a question here too. Of just you know, we're talking about all this, and we're, and we're seeing this. Let's grab the crystal ball. Let's get that out, and and tell me what you see, or what you hope, or what you think is gonna gonna happen for credit managers as they continue to adapt and change in light of all that's happened and, and kind of not knowing when the end is in sight, so to speak. So what, what do you see as we kind of turn the corner on 2020 and look at 2021? Well, I think in my opinion, two very important uh, pieces is one is, like I said, the importance of communication has become very apparent. It will continue to be on the forefront. Um, and then the second is technology. Technology will continue to have an impact mm -hmm. on the way in, way in which we make decisions. Um, the tools needed now to run a good credit shop and in the future are very different than what they were in the past. Um, and it will be dependent on how versatile, techno technologically savvy uh, the manager is, right? It's all data driven. And I think if, you know, if I can offer a lens into what I think the future is, is like is, um, you know, credit management in the past was, you know, having a good sense of, you know, risk and whatnot, you still need that basic, but you absolutely need to be comfortable with technology and integrating different technological aspects into your processes in order for you to really be able to have that level of influence in your business. Absolutely. Agreed. And Nathan, can you cut her the check so that she gets that in the mail? I, I know. I mean, all these like, <laughs> hey, data integration, all this, I just keep smiling. I'm just standing back going, yep, we're here. I'm Hi, huge folks. on that though. We're I mean, right I've, I've, I've seen it firsthand. You know, when I first got into the credit business, you know, like uh, Nashad said, we kind of fall into it, right? out of university and I was looking at this aging, you know, like the, the paper with the, on the dot matrix, it had the holes yeah. on the side and yeah. the aging and I had to go through this. And I said, oh my God, if I have to spend the next 25 years looking at doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I could still you know? see it now, you know, the green writing and on the green screen, the AS400 times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, that was 25 years ago. I think it's just, um, we need to be comfortable with the fact that technology is going to be an enablement for us in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. And if you look at the last 30 years, you know, technology for sure is here to stay and, and we should use it to our advantage. In the last 30 years, you know, computer speed has increased 3,500 folds, you know, from one megahertz computer speed to now we have five gigahertz computer. And it will continue to, to advance with count quantum uh, computing coming around the corner as well. So you're gonna do, you're gonna be able to look at a lot of data and do a lot of things at a speed of 
you know, in a matter of seconds, decisions mm -hmm. will have to be made. But mm -hmm. uh, we should not forget that the human touch, touch is very important. Is should remain an important piece of that puzzle as well. Absolutely. You know, you can a hundred percent. You can have all the great technology, but if you don't have that sense of who that other person is at the other end, now it's a video phone, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have that sense of whether that you know person is. Uh, not being genuine with you in, in terms of when they can pay their bill. There's, if somebody wants to fraud you, they will be able to fraud you. That, mm -hmm. that is huge uh, right now. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing your customer and n having a really deep, intimate understanding of their business, that's where you can have the advantage of being able to decipher, is this company going to make it or not? Mm -hmm. I would just add a couple more things to that. Um, so maybe this is covered under automation, but more so reliance right now or in the future on the credit scoring because credit management's time is gonna be very valuable. And if they can leave the smaller decisions to the automated credit scoring and the yeah. real time data, yeah. and I guess that's where Lena Yor and Nathan's expertise also comes into play. Uh, mm -hmm. that would definitely help the organization go forward. The other thing that I had made a note was better contract management. You know, I answered the question in the past that we haven't made any change to our credit application right now, but if this continues in the future, we definitely have to have better contract management to mitigate any future risk, we, whether it's a credit application or whether it's a lease document, we'll have to have a written agreement that clarifies all the expectations, you know, uh, it's like a, a mitigation plan, you know, that we have. So that I definitely see in the future as well, uh, those two things. Automation is a given, like the credit manage, uh, management uh, managers would not have been able to survive this pandemic and be resilient if mm -hmm. we did not look into efficiencies. And, and, you know, and I'm glad that all of us are on this panel and a lot of us out there you know, we are believing in it and we are, you know, finding time and money. Finding the money is hard for the automation. You know, a lot of organizations would want to do that, but they might not have the funds because as I mentioned before, there's a double whammy in, for some organizations, you know, there's a decline in sales and increase in bad debt. So they are like trying to figure out, should we be investing this money right now in technology or not? But, you know, as we spoke earlier, it is up to us to present that case and, you know, take it and, you know, tell them that, you know, I guess the cost benefit analysis or the payback that's going to be there for the organization in the next few years if we go that route. That's right. All Thank right. You. And, and I'm going to cut her a check, too. I know. Right. We're, we're, this is great. This is, you know, we do we we we, uh, we give these out for free because we get all these yeah. uh, these checks coming in that, that from the folks that get to hear about this. All right. All I have two more, Sorry, two, two more just... questions yeah. and I'm going to do like a lightning round here. So I'm going to go okay. really fast. One person answer it. Give me a quick answer on it. Uh, first one is, are there any new or special or different red flags that you need to be looking for based on what's going on out there right now? Anyone? This is an old one, but definitely an increase in the orders. You know, mm. if somebody's all of a sudden placing very large orders, you know, and consistently they're planning to skip. Just be mm. very careful, very mindful of those. Yeah. Okay. So there you also go. Also, things There's, like uh, payment, right? the payment terms, like yeah. you know, not not bothered so much by by your 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 terms. So, um, yeah. you know, if they're if you know they're looking for they pay you in by cod for example or a wire payment you know sometimes those could be fraudulent as well yeah gotcha all right so anyone having issues with or enforcing digital signatures hmm. that's a good question i know canada used to have that issue i'm not sure i've come across that uh recently we don't. using docusign will will alleviate a lot of those issues mm -hmm. And Going speaking of technology. contracts and signature, I think the, the new talk technology on the horizon is blockchain. So blockchain, correct. You know, where yeah. you would be able to manage uh, through smart contracts and signatures uh, and all of that. Something to 100% look out for. agree. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. One more uh, amazing way that blockchain is going to be implemented uh, or is already. 
Just on the technology piece, I know, uh, you know, we have some uh, representation from some very large companies here, but just uh, back to the whole cost benefit analysis that Sangeeta uh, mentioned, you know, even if you are a smaller organization and you're a very small team, there are tools out there that can assist you, uh, that will help you expedite uh, those orders quickly and, um, you know, help you come to the decisions fairly quickly. You know, there's a lot of uh, smaller companies that may still rely on, you know, picking up the phone and calling for references so um, you know just wanted to, to throw that out there and if there's anybody in the audience who who is a smaller company and maybe is is challenged with budget uh, or doesn't quite understand what options are available you know feel free to reach out to anybody on the on the panel here or myself or Nathan um, you know we can help guide you with uh, you know what some of those options or tools might be that could help you Absolutely. All right. One last one here. And it's a, it's more of a positive question. So I'm going to let each of you, if you want, like a 10 to 30 second answer, and then we're going to wrap this up uh, on a positive side. What things are you looking at to be confident in, in growing an account or in businesses growing or that type of thing so that you can expand as well? I'm going to say business plan. Um, you know, back to communication. Yeah, I was going to say business strategy. Yeah. Okay. So really those. understanding what that customer, where that customer wants to head and, and how, um, as an organization, how we might fit in uh, to help them get there. Sure. Transparency with communication. Yeah. Okay. The new CF yeah. credit. Or if you go to the basic of doing a SWOT analysis where, you know, things have definitely changed, you will see new, new, uh, you know, new things on a SWOT analysis uh, yes. these days, you know, the threats and the opportunities that are out there. And Absolutely. try to capitalize and plan for it for those. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, folks, we are right up against time, which just means that there was a good discussion going on, um, which I always appreciate. To all of our panelists and to my amazing co host, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you being here. For all of you listening in, thank you so much for joining us and for joining us all year long. Uh, this is the last webinar that we are having in 2020. So thank you for joining us on the 54 different webinars that we have uh, hosted this year. Um, and we look forward to bringing you a whole new set next year. Uh, we are already have them all planned out through March. So please join us then. You will be getting that follow-up email. So if you want to connect with any of our panelists, myself, Lena, anybody, all that information will be on there. Uh, you'll be receiving an email from me within the next 24 to 48 business hours. And uh, from all of us here at Credit Safe and all the panelists, uh, thank you so much. Happy holidays and have a great new year. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks, your time. Happy holidays to everyone. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you.